Welcome, everyone. Today, I'll be talking to Dion Pralika. Dion is the co-founder of Sol exclusive membership community that helps its members to find other true sneakerheads, collectors and enthusiasts, providing them with the right tools and resources to purchase the products they want for retail. Dion, welcome to the Membership Maker Podcast. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. Does thrive when they cater to a specific audience. You run quite a niche membership community. Yep. How did you figure out that niche? Um, just comes from a personal, personal, uh, passion of mine really uh i love sneakers i love the culture to do with it i was frustrated by the current landscape and my primary goal was how do i bring the community the culture together through community because i wanted to engage with other people like myself and i found that was dissipating online through twitter through instagram it wasn't it wasn't the same anymore um and i just loved it i, I knew there was there was a hole that needed to be filled in this massive market where everyone was in my opinion thinking about it the wrong way um, sneakers is a hundred billion dollar market. Resale is a sixty, sorry, six to thirty billion dollar market globally. Um, it's massive, but no one's thinking about the consumer. And I was the consumer, and I looked at it. I'm like, what the hell do I do? I'm frustrated. This isn't fun. Where are my Where are my other sneakerheads? Who can I talk to? And um, I just dialed into my experiences and frustrations and my passions to create that um, that community and that platform for us. So, kind of like an aside question. Obviously, since this is a huge community uh, in general, not just yours, just in general uh, around sneakers, and obviously there's social media like Instagram, and there's obviously influencers out there who are sneakerheads who are posting about this and yep. people are commenting on it. Um, what about that? Did you see, okay, that's, that's fine. That's a place to talk about sneakers for sure. But what was missing exactly that you thought you were filling? So a lot of the industry, not a lot of the industry, a lot of the innovation in the space was focused around the secondary sales and the resale. So the concept of maybe more relatable PlayStation 5s were very difficult to get over the holiday and people were selling them for a large profit. That's the sneaker industry, specifically last five years has gotten out of control. So the average person who wants to buy a shoe for $200 is basically just being left out in the wild to spend three, four, five hundred dollars $500 to buy it because again, all the innovation was coming from how can I charge this person more for the shoe they want versus how do I enable this person to buy it for the lowest possible price? Um, and that's that's the gap I was trying to fill, right? There was nothing in between. It was either if you don't get it from Nike, um, you got to go get it from StockX. And I wanted to eliminate StockX from that and, and give people no reason to go to secondary marketplaces to buy and pay those premiums because they could get it from us directly. I think it's, it makes sense to follow a niche that you already are involved in, that you already know about as opposed to random mm -hmm. niche, right? Like, oh, you're going to be a yoga teacher if like you don't do yoga or like that doesn't make, oh, but I think yoga is going to be popular. So I'm going to create a business around that. Like that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Stick to what you know. Um, even then it's difficult, but yep. at least you're eliminating some of the unknown variables. And I also like that you're not just, you're not just targeting folks who are, you know, kind of into sneakers. You're, you're trying to target the folks who are like really into sneakers, yep. right? So like trying to, though, I don't know what you would call that. It's not like, experts or professionals, but like people that like, this is like a passion. Yeah. Person. And, and, uh, you know, the term that gets thrown around a lot is sneakerheads, sneaker enthusiasts, collectors, whatever you would want to call them. Our approach has been right. It's a hundred billion dollar market. I don't have to go for the hundred billion dollar market right now. Why not focus on the two, three, four, five billion dollar aspect of that, that is super focused, spending the most money, the most engaged, acquire them, build an audience and a product around them. And then when we're ready, we scale and build outwards. We then go attract the father with two kids who used to be a sneakerhead, but wants to be involved in the culture for $7 a month. You know, we find our scale and, ex you know, explore the rest of the market, but go to the people who are going to be the most engaged, who will give us the best feedback. Um, that, in my opinion, is the same model that the brands follow. Nike, Adidas, New Balance is they have these sneaker releases that are limited and some that are not, but they use it as a barometer to test what is the rest of the world going to want because these super passionate people are going for this. So if we see that this can resonate with them, that will follow into culture, into influencers, into movies, and then into mainstream, and we can leverage that to sell product. That is definitely the way to think about it, and that's how we approach building the business and building our audience.
Yeah, I love that. It's really smart. Just like dive right into the center, like the core yeah. of the niche, like because that is where all the energy is going to be, and yeah. then expand out as needed. Because um, <clears throat> if you start too wide, you're not going to resonate with folks. It's, it's a lot harder. You're gonna you're gonna get you know people that are like half interested, asking questions, maybe being cheap, maybe canceling, and you're yeah. going to kind of flounder a little bit with the business. But if you go to the folks where it's like these are the people that, that care the most about this thing. If you can't get them to sign up for your service, you got a fundamental issue. And it also exactly. is a good way to sort of test. Does this business even make sense, right? Exactly. Instead of trying to cast a giant net for product market fit and trying to do a hundred things to appease to a hundred different user profiles, find the best ones who can give you the highest revenue revenue per user and then test, 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 iterate find the perfect product for them and then pull pieces out of that to see where it fits in with the rest of the market and different types of users, because you'll just be pulling yourselves at too many different, different places and you won't build a, a great product. It'll be too generalized. Right. Yeah. And, and I think it's one of those counterintuitive things again, especially if you're a newer business owner where it's like, no, no, I don't, I don't want to say no to anybody. I want everyone to come and sign up. Uh, why, why would I make it exclusive or make it so that it doesn't appeal to everybody? And it, the counterintuitive side of that is like, you want that in the beginning. You, you yes. can't do everything all at once. You can't do the wide net. It's much, much harder. Just yes. pick that core in the beginning. Especially as a bootstrap company. Um, you know, it's what we did, what you guys have done, what bootstrap founders do is the opposite of Quibi, right? Quibi took billions of dollars and was like, here you go world, we have the perfect product, but didn't take any time to actually get to know their audience um, and made assumptions based off of that, right? So, you know, it's it's getting lost in the idea of TAM and this hundred billion, hundred million dollar company, right? Within the, the VC industry and all that stuff. But it's just like, if you can do one thing really well and monetize that, um, you'll have a rock solid foundation that gives you the, the opportunity to then expand away from there without losing your base and growing the company. And that's been very valuable to me f through everything that we've been planning and doing. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us, Dion. We really appreciate it. Would you like to share any resources or recommendations for folks trying to learn more about Soul Savvy? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, please check us out on soulsavvy.com with one V S A V Y.com. Um, it's spelt wrong on purpose because when we did this, you couldn't get the two V's in the domain name and why not, you know? Um, so check us out soulsavvy.com, the same thing on, on social Instagram. And if you're a sneakerhead casual or, or experienced, um, definitely give us a look.